How do you get an internship at a big tech company, such as the FAN companies, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google? Well, today I'm here with a software engineer who is currently working at these FAN companies. What's up, y'all? I'm David. I've been working in tech for about six months full time. Before we go into the details, can you give us the overview of the big steps we need to take in order to land an internship? Well, there's only two real steps. You just need to one, get an interview and two, pass the interview. And I guess what I'll be talking about is just how do you do one and how do you do two? So what grades do you need in order to land an internship? So contrary to popular belief, grades are actually not super duper important. Like if you have a 4.0, that's nice. But I actually think something more interesting would be, let's say you had a three or something not super, super great, but you organized like 10 hackathons or you won a hackathon. I know there's a lot of people who always say like, oh, I have a really terrible GPA. Like how do I get into a good company? Just omit it from your resume. Almost. I think pretty much all of the time. I've never been asked for my GPA once. So you said landing an interview and then passing the interview. So break down how you can land an interview. Landing the interview is gonna depend a lot on your personal background. So for example, there's some people who go to uh, target schools, AKA schools that these companies come and recruit at. So this would be like top engineering schools like MIT, Stanford, Waterloo in Canada is also one of them. For people going to these schools, just the school name alone is going to carry a lot of weight. So you don't have to try super duper hard to get an interview. Now, I didn't go to any of these schools, but <laughs> my impression of it based off talking to them is you can kind of go to a career fair and just line up and chances are you'll get an interview if you just do that. But if you're like me and didn't go to a target school, there's a bunch of other things you can do to also make your resume more attractive. So the number one best thing to have on a resume is relevant work experience. And this is always true. It's kind of not a non answer, but the best way to get an internship is to do internships beforehand. So that's like working at McDonald's requires four years of experience, but how do you actually get internships in the very, very beginning? Right. How do you get internships? So you don't have any previous internships, right? So there's a couple things about that. Like one is you can't expect necessarily to always get into your dream company on your very first try. Like I took a really, really long time to end up where I am. I think I did like five internships in total before I got to the company wow. I really wanted to end up at. And I think a lot of people out there, they think that, oh, like my very first internship as a freshman, I need to get into Google or else. Like that's pretty unrealistic. There's a lot of people who want to do the same thing and you're going to have to be pretty special to stand out enough for that. The other thing is that when you don't have any relevant work experience, there's other things you can do to make your attractiveness or competitiveness as a candidate stand out better. One of these things is personal projects, like I mentioned earlier. So if you have a lot of projects, especially if they're impressive or technically challenging or just sound kind of interesting on a resume, something like a Bitcoin trading bot or like a video game renderer or just some app that like helps the elderly remi uh, remember to take their meds. Like these are all good examples of things that you could build and sound pretty cool. The other thing is that you need to get your resume in front of a recruiter to actually get an interview. And people from target schools have an easier time because recruiters come to them. But if you're not one of those people, you also have a couple of options. Networking. One of the best ways to get an interview at a company is to get a referral from someone who already works at the company. I think almost every single interview I've ever gotten was through a referral. And a referral is better because it is kind of like a fast track line that it puts your resume into instead of the general web application, which honestly, a lot of the times I'm told nobody even looks at. So you're basically saying don't apply online because you're probably not going to get in. You need to find a person already working at the company to give you a referral. I would actually recommend the opposite. You should always apply online because it takes like five seconds and you don't really lose anything, but it's much more effective to get a referral. And the way you can get these referrals typically is from people who are older than you and further along in their like college career than you are. The other options are going to your career fairs and talking to the companies there. Depending on your school, you may or may not have the most desirable companies there, but fan companies tend to be pretty big and they cast a really, really wide net. So I actually think like a lot of schools will have at least one of these companies there and you can talk to the recruiters do all the typical like career fair stuff, like have an elevator pitch, give them your resume, uh, firm handshake, be sociable and all that stuff. And you might impress someone enough to actually give you an interview. You said something that caught my ear, said have an elevator pitch. So what was yours? 
I don't have one, dude. <laughs> uh, I would say, so I did not do very well at career fairs. I don't think I've ever gone a single interview from career fairs, but I do know it works because other people have gone interviews at career fairs. Don't do what I did, have an elevator pitch and do all the things properly. The very last option is if these things all don't pan out for you, and you can kind of do this concurrently with all the other things as well, is you can reach out to recruiters directly instead of waiting for them to reach out to you. I would go on LinkedIn and use my free premium month and I would use that to direct message recruiters at companies I wanted to work at. I would say something like, hi, I'm David, like I go to school at this school. Um, I'm really interested, I've worked at these companies and I'm really interested in working at your company and here's my resume if you'd like to take a look. And this works not a lot of the time, but it does work some of the time. So again, it's all about skipping the lines. This might put you at the top of some recruiter's inbox who would have never looked at your resume otherwise, which is actually exactly what happened to me. I remember one time I sent an email to a Dropbox recruiter and I had I applied like two months ago and I didn't hear anything, but I sent the email and about 30 minutes later I got a coding challenge from them. So it does work some of the time. All these things are all methods you should try and if you're really serious about them, you can try all of them at the same time. Yeah, you just slide into the recruiter's DMs and maybe they'll see your message at the top of their inbox. So if you just enter college, when should you actually start applying for internships? This is also a question I see a lot, like, oh, how do I know I'm ready? When should I apply? And the answer is apply ASAP. You really have nothing to lose. The truth is, is most software engineering jobs, you're gonna learn 99% of what you need to know on the job anyway. And there's really no reason to wait longer in your career, in your like college courses to get better at it because they won't really teach you what you need to know anyway. So honestly, as soon as you enter school, go for it. And Really? First year? Yeah, do it. Just go for it. Honestly, just go for it. Just go for it! So basically, there's a couple ways you can get the interview. The most effective way to get an interview is get a referral. The second most effective way is to do recruit, go to the recruiting events at your school. And the third most effective way is probably to cold DM them. And then the last least effective way is to apply online. Now let's say you've landed your first interview, how do you actually pass that? What kind of interview you get kind of depends a lot on the company you're interviewing at. There are different types of interviews, but they're almost always technical. So I'm gonna answer this from the perspective of fan companies because that's what Hafu probably put on the title of this video. <laughs> um, Yo, you gotta get the views somehow. Yeah, so from fan companies, you're almost always going to get questions about algorithm. This is when people talk about like algo questions or leak code questions, this is what they're talking about. And what these questions typically are, if anyone's unfamiliar with them, it's kind of like a little programming puzzle made up so you, the interviewer can see you code live and how you think about edge cases and debugging and algorithmic complexity and all those things. A lot and of buzzwords, eh? A lot of buzzwords that I'm assuming if you watch this video, you know what these things are because you'll be a CS student or something equivalent. But think of it as just kind of a brain teaser, except for coding and you have to code up a solution, explain it and test it and all those things to make sure it's correct. And these questions, they can sometimes be pretty hard for people who haven't practiced them before. I know very few people who are just good at these things naturally or learned enough from their college careers to get good at them. Ideally, you do not want to be starting to prepare for your interview before, like as soon as you get it. You ideally would have been already practicing for a while. The most popular out of all of these resources is a book called Cracking the Coding Interview by Gail Lackman McDowell. And what it is, is it's 189 questions. And I would really recommend going through the entire book for the sections that like aren't very specific, like networking or Java questions. And a second resource that's really popular is a website called leetcode.com. And what leetcode.com is, is it's basically a collection of, like a huge collection of these algorithm questions submitted by people who've actually gotten them in interviews. And it's really nice because A, you can order by how often these questions show up. You can also order by which companies have asked which questions so you can get a better sense of what each company likes to ask. And you actually have a code editor in there as well. So you can see the uh, problem statement, you can code it up on your own, and then you can press submit and it'll run the test cases against it to see if you did it correctly. And there's also a forum for discussion so you can see what other people have submitted and what's like the best possible solution. And I think for me, the best resource was leetcode.com when I was preparing because there's some people on there who are like crazy good at these questions. And I would write like some solution of mine, it would pass the test cases and it'd be like, wow, this is 10,000 times worse than what this guy actually wrote. And then if you analyze what other people wrote, you can kind of understand 
oh, here's some things you should be doing to write it more effectively. Here's some things you should be writing to make the solution better, more correct, more clean. If you buy LeetCode Premium, which is a subscription for I think about $25 a month, then you get to see which companies ask which questions and you can also order the questions by how often they show up. Always invest in yourself. $25 a month might seem like a lot, but if you can land a job, it's not that much money. So do everything you need in order to make your dreams into your reality. Best investment I made in all of my computer science career was buying LeetCode Premium. <laughs> it honestly is. There's nothing else that has like even close to a ROI as good as LeetCode. So just buy it. If you're preparing, just buy it. And then you pass? Well, I passed. <laughs> you guys pass too. If you prepare enough, then you can pass. How much did you practice in order to pass these interviews? There are times where you're just going to get a bunch of questions you don't know how to do and you'll bomb the interview but people at that same company, like other interviewers at the same company might have asked you something that you knew how to do. And then you just cleared the interview with flying colors. So it is a lot dependent on luck. So I can't say that, oh, if you do this many questions then you'll probably be really good. It's always better to do more questions if you have time, but you have to balance doing more questions with your social life, with your schoolwork and all those things. So do as much as you can. How many did you do? So what I did was I did about 200 LeetCode questions and I did about three quarters of cracking the coding interview. And I did this over a period of many, many months. It's important to do mock interviews, ideally with someone at the company who knows what the interviewing process is like, but that's pretty hard to find a lot of the times. So doing it with a friend as well, someone who's gone through these interviews would be really nice. And honestly, just having someone look at you and ask you to explain your thoughts when you're doing things can catch so many mistakes. So this is something I didn't touch upon before, but getting the solution correct is only one part of the thing. Even if you get the right solution, if you can't explain your thoughts clearly or if you can't write down the code properly, you're also not going to pass the interviews. So I know several people who they're really good at doing the questions, but they're not super good at articulating it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, even though they got the correct solution a lot of the times, they just didn't pass based off communication. No way. Yeah. Really? So it's not about just getting it correct. It's also about being able to articulate your solution and walk through the solution with the interviewer so they're on the same page as you. Developing that skill, talking and coding at the same time while thinking about the solution to the problem, these are all really important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I recommend reading Cracking the Coding Interview because there's an entire section in there about how you should be talking, what things you should be doing, what steps you should take it. What's the most important thing that people should know about the interview process? So there's a couple things. Prepare as early as you can. Take algorithms as early as you can. Apply to a lot of companies, especially as a freshman, you're probably not gonna get that many interviews. So just take whatever you can get. The last thing is if you're aiming for Fang, it's really important to do an internship and then convert to full-time because the alternative to that is to interview directly for full-time. And if you interview directly for full time, the interviews are a lot longer, the technical bar is higher, and also there's a lot fewer spots because typically what fan companies do these days is they realize that returning interns are the most valuable hires. Most of their new grad headcount is gonna be taken up by returning interns, and there's only gonna be a few spots that aren't taken, so you have to be really, really exceptional to get one of those last spots. And if you wanna find out how to land a full-time job offer, subscribe to this channel because I'll be uploading that soon. Turn on notifications too. Click right here, right here, and you can watch the video. My name is Hafu Go, and this is David. Thank you, David. And we wish you good luck. Hopefully, you'll get that internship very, very soon. Go for it. <laughs>